かってThere's no middle ground, like not like a little zoom closer. No. This should this should do it, right? Alright. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're going. Cheers, I'm drinking my coffee. This is usually my, my dirty area where I take motors apart, that's why it's a little down there, but you get the idea. So I'm gonna try and keep my head away from the camera. What I already said is we're trying to build a PK fork for a uh, Vespa Sprint. I've already modified the fork to for the fender to fit. We are gonna use a Grumeca hub. We're using a PLC corset disc. This was given to me uh, two years ago, I wanna say, or almost three years ago now, when I put a PLC floating disc on my P200. Uh, PLC Corsa makes awesome stuff. Go check them out. We're also going to mount... No. We're going to mount this whole thing with an AFP radial caliper mount. So this replaces your stock um, master cylinder mount. I wonder if I have the stock one here. Yes, I do. Here's a grimy stock one. Here's the AFP one. This one is machined out of one piece of aluminum, which is red. CNC parts are always cool. And then um, you can see the difference in caliper mounting. But this is also neat because it has a sensor for a magnetic speedo pickup. Now, I don't have this magnetic uh, speedo pickup yet. I think we're going to go and get it. I'm not quite sure what to do about the Speedo yet on this bike. With this radial uh, mounting system, we're going to use a four piston stage six caliper, a 185mm shock from YSS, and Spiegler brake line. I just on the other stream, I, that was super laggy, I tightened these down. For the disc, I used a little bit of Loctite and just tighten it down. We're going to use the, I've already put spacer in an O-ring, so we're just going to go and grease this up. Same with the axle, give it a little bit of grease. Yeah, my computer is way, way old here that I use for streaming. It's not for streaming, it's my music box for the shop. I guess the phone just works better. I don't have my phone mount, so I just clamped it to my, uh, to my workbench here. All right. Put this guy down, and we've got a piece of paper here. Get my fingers. Take another sip of coffee. These are always a pain, especially in the US. Um, it's a, a D washer. It has a D shape, a little notch that goes onto your shaft here, only in one position. 
And the reason these are hard to find in the US because in the US they only sold or barely sold any peas with 20 millimeter. Oops, axle. Meaning these are specific for 20 mil. These and the, um, the snap ring. So I just ordered a bunch of those. snap washer on what's the English word for that circlip circlip right circlip not a snap washer it's a snap ring or a circlip Where's the box? Yeah, right. I know I have them somewhere. They're not here. They're in my stash. You're right. I completely forgot about the second speaker. I forget that the kit comes with two. one was right I, uh, I did forget the spacer all right back to normal well, for the SS, I'm currently... Hey, Antoine, what's up? I love your parts. Jeez, this is cool. J'aime bien tes trucs, là. Ça fait pas mal de temps que j'ai parlé français, mais...
Non, j'avais une question, mais je me rappelle plus. Oh, yeah, this significantly, significantly. Yeah, that's what I did on. Um, I think you commented on the pictures of the, the 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 fork with the on the green bike that I did just recently. Um, we had to end up moving the shims on both of these sides underneath uh, the mounting for it to get it well centered. But I think he's saying it's 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 still not balanced. So when he's coming in, um, the guy rides hard. He goes to the dragon and just rides the crap out of it. So when he comes in, we'll we'll check the wear and see if maybe we have to move the shims uh, left or right. these we can mount later, All right. Oh, it's normal that um, I'll just stick to English. I had to grind off just a tiny bit on the back of the caliper to make to make clearance for the hub. Is that normal? It wasn't much. I, I mean, I barely touched it. There was some. Yeah, on the other one I used the Star Hub. I do think I tried it on a black. I had this one powder coated in black, but it could have been the paint, like uh, the powder coat. So I'll see. But it's not a big deal. I'm just I'm just wondering if that's normal. So I want to I want to say I want to move to the shock. I also have the AF parts um, mounting plate. I've rarely worked with PK forks, so all of this stuff is a little weird to me. Like this notch here, this was rather interesting. I'm glad I found one next door. Let me show you this. So this is, I had to find, uh, dig out this nut. Um, let me go closer which uses a 14 millimeter wrench compared to your usual 13 millimeter, 13 millimeter um, wrench nut. The reason is the
There's one nut that fits in here, and then one that fits in here. You're gonna say, but Lee, why don't you feed them through the top? The reason is that's really not much area here to work with the nut. Maybe. Actually, I'd say maybe it's it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. I'll make that I'll make that call and say it's fine. There you go. See, the reason is here. There's barely any play for anything here because we're moving it in. Now this is a thicker nut, I can use something smaller. But there really isn't much play. Is that a is that an issue or am I just doing something wrong here? Like I said, I, I've only worked with two PK forks so far, and we did not use this uh, mounting plate. Like it, it's fine on this side, but there's issues with clearance on this side. So I was, I was considering of using. Um, I have this hardware where I can use an Allen wrench. But to do it from the other side here, and that gives me plenty of of clearance to fit this through. So I can just use my 13, 14 mil here. I gotta pick up some hardware. Hold on. What do you guys use mostly? I mean, I, I use the, the YSSS because it's cheap. Really, because it's cheap. Um, and the black goes with much of the design. There's the BGM one, which is true, but that one's very expensive. Um, I would love to sell the Molosi to every customer. But it'd be cool to hear what kind of shocks you use. Um, this customer actually, Antoine, if you can get me an Erlins shock from for a Zip SP, that would be phenomenal. I've had a hard time finding them. So this customer said, if you find an Erlins, I don't care. Get it. Actually, it reminds me, I haven't really looked yet. This is the wrong hardware. I'll be right back. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. I remember them. Uh, 2000, 2010 or 2011 was the last time I went to SPA uh, for the two race championship up there. And there were quite a couple of guys that had them. I could ask uh, T 
Timmy as well. I'll find one. I'm hoping there are a bunch of guys who used to buy them for their uh, for their racing scooters and then they got too old for it. <laughs> oh come on, this thing is so jumpy. Also, thank you guys for tuning in. I really, really appreciate it. I want to say, I want to say the, the shocks they uh, they cross reference. They're the same for the automatic stuff as well as the. Uh, So I was actually considering, and I think this might this might actually be the way to mount it, is to mount the bottom plate and then feed the shock through with the buffers. I think that's what I'm gonna do. That way I'm safe and I know everything will fit. So what I need to do is take this guy off.
Yeah, I know what you mean, um, Tony, but there isn't much space to get a socket on here right now. That's the big, that's the big problem that I have. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pull like that. Now we're going to tighten this guy properly. to keep not sure if it's gonna work it might actually might I think this is fine. All right. Yeah, this will work. Cool. I did have hardware out. Oops. I do need to get, um, here's what I'm going to do, I'm going to mount this this way, I do need to get more hardware, I'm going to use a nylon stuff here and a slightly longer bolt. But we'll mount this for now, that will do. 
What are you saying? That, that new brake light routing you are advertising. Is it longer? Um, is it longer? I actually don't have them next to each other. I will when I mount it on the orange one. Um, but this is basically it. I measured this. This is the right length for the shock. I measured this with a piece of cable. Um, it does feed through. Let's see, let's see. Let me show you this. So we got both our holes, correct? Um, this is just from, from mounting it. On the PK, I don't know if it's standard that the hole's bigger or it's been pre-drilled by them. But easy enough. This is one of our Spiegler brake lines. Wait, where is the phone? There. These are braided lines inside and they're coated. For this one, I choose blue, which I'll give you a brief glimpse. And so the big thing about this brake line is that it feeds into the fork. I do, I don't want the rubber to get caught. So just a tiny, tiny bit of grease will help it feed through there once it's in. It comes out the top. I can't show you that right now. Camera is just not there. But it comes out the well actually let me see probably can there we go you can see it comes out the top and then it goes wherever you want Then we want a little bit more actually. To go onto the shock. So we're gonna mount our brake line here.
It's always complicated to do work and stream at the same time. You got to be focused on both. I want to make sure I don't fuck anything up here. Tighten these at 28. Should have read the booklet. I don't remember. 28 seems pretty safe. Right, so now it's where it gets interesting. Um, these are these Spiegel attachments. They're pretty neat because they, they do swivel. I haven't tightened this guy yet. Uh, right now we're just mocking up. I actually don't have much of the headset, jeez. Nah, I got plenty. <laughs> kind of get paranoid about the length sometimes. Ago, I did take all of this stuff out already. Anyway, there's a bleeding valve that goes on here. Right now, I'm just going to use a mock up bender bolt. Oh, yeah, my, my lot of shit up. You know, there's always leftover. There's always leftovers, so that stuff flies in there. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it helps you, and it's the only way you can mount a brake line like this. It really is, and it's an M8. Um, you basically just tighten it. They give you a tiny bit of Loctite in every packet, and this is the way it mounts. I really dig this look. Keep the stage six on there for now.
do have we have plenty of clearance. We can go in just a little bit more. I do have one problem. I gotta cut the fender. And the question is, do you want to see the fender? Because it's not your run-of-the-mill repainted sprint fender. It's a cruddy old piece of crap. But it isn't. It's an original paint Sprint blue badge, like a Sears blue um, and yeah, a Sears blue badge. It's the BB1T blue gray, Grigio Azzurro or something. It's been gently sanded, you can see it, and then co coated with. Uh, a flat epoxy clear coat. There's been some welding done on it. That wasn't me. That's the way it came out. But with the treatment that was done to the fender, just blank metal gets this kind of yellow. I don't remember the product that he used, but just the whole thing's gonna look so amazing. And now that I'm already giving away all the secrets, might as well show you the color scheme. I got some work to do on these Pinasco ribs. There you go. There it is. I mean, I still need it up there, but. So it can't be new. It's got to be used. That's the big thing here. Which means I guess I can show you the bike. some stuff on there so don't freak out that's the bike again all of these have been treated oh, I can zoom out a little bit is treated this is all super smooth and then hold on I got st gotta stay true to the 60s
This is a fatty. The one thing that's really janky about this bike is that whoever had this before welded the side cowl on straight up just welded it on we were going back and forth about should we cut this off should we not cut this off and just try and fit it again and eventually we're like come on it's history of the bike and with the right preservation we didn't do this this the bike came like that But with the right preservation, we'll just keep it. I might put a uh, rubber trim on here, depending on how it looks. But that's how it was. It was a little rusty inside. This is all treated. This looks worse than it actually is. So all of this is new coating. This is not rust. This was rust. You get the idea. Same, uh, this cowl right now is being welded because the pin was off and we're gonna try and make, align it with the back here because that's seen some stuff. The color right now does not do it justice. Um, this needs to be out in the sun because it has that slight blue to it. It's beautiful. It's, I can't roll, I can't wait to roll this out into the sun. Actually, I could, we're really close. Sorry, to, sorry for the mess. This is what streaming looks like. <laughs> well, you get the idea. Oh, well, I want to say that's basically it. He didn't see nothing. Don't tell anyone about this project. And uh, I'm gonna move slowly forward. I still gotta align the fender. I've done a couple of things. I, I, I thought I had it without cutting it out, but I think I might have to cut a piece out here. I do gotta mount the nose as well. I'm gonna do that next here. Uh, once I got this fork off, I gotta go over and get a nut. And then this can stay on there. Same, the shock is mounted. Shock at the bottom is not mounted yet. I do need some hardware. You can, you can see here, that is where the the disc hits. So I'm gonna hit that with um, with the grinder and it should clear it all up. Yeah, thanks for watching guys. Love this project. Uh, Jesse loves this project too because he's been waiting. I'm sure he's watching. I gotta take this guy off, give it a grind. And then uh, finish up. I'll see you guys soon. Peace. Peace. I'll, I'll quit pause until I turn the phone off.